coaches, we have a speaker today that is speaking on a topic that I'm very, very excited about. And I want to give her an introduction because I just met her myself and I've been working with her and she's wonderful. Um, she started coaching in May of 2016, so four years. But you know how they say something like it takes years for to become an overnight success? Well, that's kind of what's been happening to her business. In the last year, it has just exploded and she's going to share why. So listen up, okay? She's currently a nine-star diamond. That is her highest achievement in her first business center. And she is a premier coach for 2020. But get this, she has already hit the qualifications for Elite 2021. So congratulations to her. She's a success club all-star legend. For those of you who are new, when you help at least three people every single month get into a healthy solution, you get points for that. Those points turn into Success Club. Multiple months of Success Club uh, means that you are creating a solid foundation for your business. 12 months in a row, you're an all-star. 24 months in a row, you are a legend. So that's what she is. And, oh, let me say where she's from because I learned how to say Blenheim, Ontario, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Shauna Blunt. Well, hello, 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 Shauna. Hello, <laughs> how's it going? Good, how was that introduction? It was great, <laughs> you said Blenheim just fine. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm learning. Okay, so um, we want to learn a little bit about your topic, but before that, why don't you tell everybody what brought you to Beachbody four years ago? Awesome. So like Sandy said, my name is Shauna. I am from a small town, Blenheim, Ontario. And my journey started in 2016. I was 21 years old. And when I first started, I was super shy, um, super introverted, like stuff like this would freak me out. Anything to do with public speaking. Um, I was literally called like the little mouse in the corner. I struggled with that like my whole life. And so something like this, like four years ago, I would, you wouldn't see me doing anything like this. So I've definitely come a long way in four years. So when I was 21, I was just finishing up school. So I went to school for early childhood education for two years. And then I also took autism and behavioral sciences. My goal in life was really to just get a job in a kindergarten classroom and continue my job with my client with autism. Um, I still to this day work with her and I still love what I do, um, but my goal was really to just work full time in a kindergarten classroom and continue my job with her. And so um, when I was in college, I was, I was still active. I was active my whole life. So I was always on volleyball teams, basketball teams, and I loved being active, but then college came and I sort of let myself go. Um, I gained weight in college. I was still going to the gym, but I was eating like crap. Um, I was going out to the bars late at night with my friends and I was like sleeping in between classes and it really just caught up to me. And so I remember feeling like super discouraged. I remember feeling like I didn't have my confidence anymore. And I remember my college roommate and she was doing insanity workouts in the basement. And me and my friends, we'd go to the gym and she'd be like downstairs in the basement, killing it with insanity workouts. We'd come home and she'd already be done her workout, showered. And we'd, we were at the gym for like two hours or whatever, something like that. And so I remember she looked incredible, but I like never really reached out to her. I just kind of watched and I was proud of her and I just never really asked or, you know, asked to join her. And so it wasn't until about two or three months um, I had left of school and I got a phone call. It was on New Year's Day that my boyfriend that I had dated back in high school, um, we had broken up. We went our separate ways when I went back to college because it was just a really toxic relationship. Um, but I got a phone call that he had fallen downstairs on New Year's Eve. Um, he was in a coma and he like had a really bad brain injury. And that like really affected me. Even though we weren't together, we had been broken up. It really affected me. Um, so I ended up moving home. I actually um, 
like I still had two months left of school, but I moved home and I finished school back at home because I was back and forth from the hospital. Um, and I just thought that was best for me at the time. And so I like lost myself. I stopped taking care of myself. I was like crying in my room at night. I remember feeling like so lost and I just like completely lost who I was. Um, and so my roommate who was a coach, she had posted, thank goodness, a before and after photo on social media because this is like something I needed to see. Um, I saw her before and after it was from insanity and I was like commenting, congratulating her. And of course she reached out to me and thank goodness because I joined her 21 day fix boot camp. That's when 21 day fix I think was a little bit newer. Um, and I, you know, got my 21 day fix DVDs. Like we didn't have beach body on demand back then. It was just, you know, those DVDs. So I ordered those and I went all in with a 21 day program. I remember it was definitely a change for me because I did not have a morning routine. I was somebody who would just like, you know, get up and go. So I had to like change my whole lifestyle, but I was ready because I knew this is something that I needed. And so I, you know, went all in for 21 days. I'd wake up at 5 a.m. I would go to my placement, which was in an autism classroom all day. And then I also had a new job at a daycare. So I'd go to work after. And I repeated that for 21 days. Um, and I was shocked with the results. I was like loving the community. I loved the people in the groups. Um, and so I sent my before and afters to my coach and she was like, oh my goodness, like you look amazing. Um, can I share your results on social media? And that alone freaked me out because like I talked about earlier, I was so like shy, anything to do with, you know, putting myself out there, like that freaked me out. So when she asked me that, I did say yes. Um, and I had, you know, family and friends coming to me like, what are you doing? Tell me what you're doing. How did you do that in 21 days? Um, but I was, you know, sending them her way because I wasn't a coach. It took me probably two months to say yes to coaching. Um, she asked me about three or four times and I said no, but finally I was like, okay, like, what do I have to lose? I'm just going to go for it. So I was so excited when I started coaching. I was excited because I was somebody who like loved the accountability. I loved the community. I loved the women in these groups. And so when I first started, I was pumped. I went to my first, um, summit it was in new orleans and it really just showed me like the opportunity this business had i remember you know watching women on stage sharing their stories um, women that were talking about how introverted they were and i really related to them because i could never see myself you know seeing success or i could never see myself putting myself out there or even anything like that so it really just like opened new doors for me and allowed me to dream big because I never really dreamed big. I remember, you know, walking across stage at school and thinking, okay, this is it. I didn't really have any big plans after that. I was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm graduated. Now I have, you know, a diploma and I'm going to get a job in a kindergarten classroom. And then that was it. So coaching really just helped me have a vision again. It helped me um, you know, see the opportunities this business had and knowing that I could build my dream life with this job that I was passionate about was just like a dream come true. So that's a little bit about my story. Um, hopefully that was everything you wanted to hear. You know, there was so much in that story. I want to first say thank you because you are a self-proclaimed introvert mm -hmm. and it is really a challenge for people to get on a national stage like this and be vulnerable and share their story. So for that, I really appreciate that. And it also um, shows other coaches that you don't have to be this, you know, big extrovert that yep. speaks on stage all the time to be an effective coach. That is why I'm excited about um, how long you've been a coach and what you're doing with coaching. Um, I also wrote down on my paper, nobody puts Shauna in the corner. <laughs> so what you were saying before, how you were just a little mouse in the corner, that is not true at all um, because you are effective as you are. Thank you. Um, and <laughs> you're welcome. And that 
you went to years of school for college. Um, you went to years of school for your um, major, um, but then when you got into it, it wasn't exactly what you wanted. And and finding Beachbody has been a better fit for you, which is also really cool because you follow one path and you just think that yeah. that's your path forever. And then and then you find something that speaks to you more. Is that exactly. a fair a fair assessment? Definitely, yeah. So let's move on with the topic because you are somebody that is pretty organized and um, mm -hmm. you you had kind of a shift in your business. I was saying earlier that it can take years to have an overnight success. So you've been coaching for four years, but this year has been really the growth spurt. Would you say that? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> this okay. year was insane. Yeah. I'll get out of the way and you talk about this topic that you and I worked on. All right. Awesome. So I'm really excited to speak on this topic because throughout my whole coaching journey, I was somebody who always had a busy schedule. So I really had to figure out when I was going to work my business and how I was going to work my business. I really had to have that time management, like when I was going to, you know, do these specific things. And I'm going to share sort of what I did um, throughout the years to move my business forward, to be able to see success. So uh, in my first year of coaching, like I said before, I was just finishing up school and then I had a job at a daycare. My second year, I was working full-time at a daycare. And then third year, I ended up working in a kindergarten classroom. So I always had a busy schedule. But when I had my full-time job in the second year at the daycare, I quickly realized that that was not for me. Um, so I knew that I had to work hard and that I had to work smart. I knew that if I wanted to be able to quit this job at the daycare, that I would have to create habits that I would have to manage my time. And so at the beginning, I made sure to treat my business like a real job. So whenever I said I was going to work my business, I would work my business. So I was showing up at a job that I didn't like. Why would I not show up for my business when I knew I wanted to move it forward? I had a vision. And so I kind of wanted to share this ex exercise with you guys that I did at the very beginning of coaching. I learned it on a team call. I don't know how I remember this, but um, so basically what we had to do was we had to this is from the book, Everything is Figure Outable. And what we had to do was we had to track everything we did for seven days straight. So whether that was, um, you know, when I was watching Netflix, when I was at work, when I was scrolling social media, um, it had to, like I wrote down literally everything I was doing when I was going out for lunch with friends. And it really was just bringing me light to where I was actually spending my time. It was really just showing me, you know, where I was doing non-business building activities and where I could actually put in the time for my business um, to move it forward and to see success. So where I was doing, you know, 20 minutes of scrolling social media, I could do 20 minutes of invites or where I was doing 30 minutes of binge watching Netflix, I could do 30 minutes of connections or, you know, where I was going out for lunch with friends or anything like that, I would not go out for lunch with friends because, you know, it was just that discipline of like, okay, what do I want most now? And where am I going to want to be later on in life? You know, you might have to miss out on things, but I knew that that at that time it was worth it. So this is where my business actually began to take off. So I hit diamond within four months of my business. Um, so I believe it was in September of 2016, I hit diamond and then I was hitting success club every month. I was bringing in business builders um, and I was making sure that I was like spending my time like 10xing everything I was doing. So for me, that meant to do my business activity tracker more than once. I wouldn't just do it once. I would do it three times a day. So whenever I had the time, I would do that. Um, and next, I needed to make sure I was creating habits that I would continue to do, um, like, you know, when I had the time. And so the first thing that I started doing, the first success habit is what I'm calling it, um, is I would set goals for the month. So I've always been a goal-oriented person. I need to have a goal that I'm working towards um, every single month, because if I didn't, then I just wouldn't do it. Like, if I didn't have anything I was working towards, then why bother? So I made sure I was specific on what I actually wanted to achieve that month. So how many success club points did I want to achieve? 
And here I always made sure I aimed high. So I always, I always wrote down no matter what SC50. And even though, like, even though I did not hit that every month, it didn't matter because I knew I was still pushing forward and like doing my best. Um, I would ask myself, you know, how many coaches do I want to recruit this month? Um, how many business builders do I want to recruit this month? I would ask myself, what time of day am I going to work my business? And when am I going to work my business? And just having these details, like I was so detailed on, you know, when my groups were starting, when my boot camps were starting, um, when my coaching sneak peeks were going to be starting. So I knew when these groups were starting and when I should be inviting to them. So creating those, you know, goals for the month really just helped me keep that vision and keep that focus. So I wasn't all over the place. Um, I just made it simple. I didn't just focus on, you know, what am I going to do next month? What am I going to do the month after? I just like focused on where I was at that point. Um, and I just did that every single month. So um, in the beginning, once hold I did. Hold on, hold on one second. I just, and I, you're doing fantastic. So the SC50 is what I want to ask you. Did you start out SC50? Because I think a few people just spit out their coffee. No, no. <laughs> I actually didn't hit, I actually achieved SC50 for the first time in Team Cup of February of 2019. Okay. Um, so it really, that Team Cup just showed me like what I was capable of. Um, so then I just started aiming for that every single month. And like I said, even though I wouldn't hit that every month, it would just, I would just know that I was continuing to shoot for that. So no, I did not hit SC50 at the beginning, um, but that was just something I would always shoot for. Okay, and and you you have mentioned Team Cup, and and you you were on a strong cup team. You were the captain of a team in February, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so so, so you had goals. Like I'm just asking, uh, just going back to your goals. How did you know what to set in your goals for Team Cup month? Yeah. Yeah, so our team actually, we we're all on the same pace and we all sort of set goals together at the very beginning of the month. You know, what do we want to achieve? Um, what rank do we want to achieve? And so I think because our team was on such a same pace and we knew that if we showed up together to achieve these things together, um, we would be able to achieve that if we kept showing up and doing the things, you know, the vital things. Um, and so that month just really showed me what I was capable of, but also what my team was capable of. Um, our team was hitting SC numbers that we've never hit before. There was new coaches on the team that were hitting high SC numbers. Um, so that just really helped me, you know, stay focused throughout the rest of the month and the rest of the year. And it just created that momentum um, throughout the rest of the year last year. So like I said, I was a diamond coach for four months, but I also coasted for two years. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Um, I coasted as a diamond for two years. I struggled with, you know, how do I lead a team? How do I, you know, help my team see success? I didn't really know where to go from there. It did take me a while to, you know, build those leadership skills and to be able to grow a team. Um, but once that happened and once we hit two star last year, it just really helped me gain that momentum and be able to have that confidence to be a leader. Um, so the next habit that I want to share with you guys is something that I was missing for a long time, and that is creating a morning routine. Um, a morning routine is something I didn't have before. So I like would literally wake up and go. I didn't have anything for myself in the morning and that was something I was missing. And I knew when I was working full time that I would have to get up pretty early. Um, I knew that it would have to be like a 5 a.m. wake up, but it was honestly so worth it. I would set my alarm for 5 a.m. I would not hit snooze. Hitting snooze would literally just make me go back to bed. <laughs> um, I wouldn't hit snooze because I knew if I would hit snooze, then I wouldn't like be able to set myself up for a, a productive day. Um, so I'd wake up at 5 a.m., take my Energize, and I would literally share this all on my social media, like in my stories, um, to show people that yes, I'm I don't want to be up right now, but I'm showing them that if I can do it, they can do it too. I would share my personal development, like what book I'm reading. And another thing that has been a huge game changer this year is vision and writing down my vision 
And just knowing like what I'm working towards and why I'm showing up every morning, it was just a great reminder to know like, why am I here and why do I keep showing up? So I, I'll actually share with you guys what I use. I use the Rachel Hollis Start Today journal and she literally has you write out five things you're grateful for, 10 dreams that you have, and then what dream you want to accomplish first. So I wrote this out every single morning this year and it's been a huge game changer for my business. Um, another thing too is when I was working full time, I like, I wouldn't really be able to show up throughout the day, but on my lunch breaks, I would still show up. I would, you know, pop in my car for my lunch and I would talk on my stories or I would, you know, do follow up messages or invites, anything I could do to, I guess, move my business forward. Even while I was at work, I would try my best to do that. So that really like started my day off right is having that morning routine set and doing that every single morning. So it was a constant habit that I could create and also like bring down to my team because we all hop on um, Zoom in the morning and this helps all of us get up knowing like, okay, there's other people on Zoom. If they can do it, like, why can't I? So that was a good like accountability piece um, to have for that morning routine. And then the last habit that I want to share with you guys is I would set after work business hours. Um, I like wouldn't be able to come home and sit on the couch and watch Netflix or else I would just procrastinate like the whole time. Um, if I like I had to literally work as soon as I got home. So I would make sure I would give myself one to two hours to work my business as soon as I walked in the door. So I would get energized because I need energized after working in a classroom with four, like four-year-old kids that are running around all day. So I would take some energized. I would ask my team if they would want to hop on for any power hours. Um, and I would work my business. I would do the income producing activities. So that was inviting connections and follow-ups. And I was working on that for like, I was consistently doing that for two years and I was eventually able to quit my job at the daycare because I was so consistent with that and made time for it. Um, I just, I want, also wanna share with you guys that I just really made sure that I knew like what I was working towards. I needed to know, you know, on the days that I didn't wanna show up, I needed to know why I was here, why I was continuing to work for this. And so I made sure that I was digging deep into why I wanted this and I wanted something to fall back on. I wanted something to know that like, if things got hard, I wasn't gonna quit. If I was going through something hard, I knew that coaching would always be there as my outlet. And it really just helped me like know why I continued to show up. And so I would ask myself, why am I here? And it wouldn't just be in my head as to why I was here. It ended up being like in my heart, like knowing I had like a true vision to what I was working towards. And so that's been a huge game changer as well. I remember I was supposed to go to Nashville with my team. It was supposed to be my first coach summit and I asked for time off and I couldn't go. And I remember thinking, I don't, I don't want to live like this. Like I, I want to be able to create my own schedule. I want to be able to, you know, live a life that I can create. I want to be I, like, I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. And so I just fell in love with the grind. I fell in love with, even though times got hard, I still kept pushing through. Um, I knew coaching was a way to create a life that I wanted. And so I really just fell in love with the process. And yes, here I am four years later and we've seen a huge growth in our team. And it, yes, it may have taken four years, but honestly, it's been so worth it because I really just fell in love with the process of being able to grow as a person and being able to see our team grow. Um, so I really just kept my blinders on. I kept my vision and I just kept going. And so this year, um, my friend or my PS coach and I, we um, attended NLC, which was a huge goal of mine. And it was also a game changer for our team. So I'm going to quickly share with you sort of what we brought back to our team and where we saw this growth this year with a group that we implemented for our team. So we learned that our team thrived off of accountability um, anything to do with like that healthy competition, anything to do with incentives, we knew that our team thrived off of that. So we started a group in 
think it was the last two weeks of March. And this group was called the Emerald Dash. Basically, the goal in this group was to go all in with your business for 14 days. And you needed to check in every single night with your business activity tracker. You needed to show up for guided power hours that we ran as leaders. And you needed to just go all in with your business for 14 days. And the goal of this group was to have four active coaches underneath you to be able to move on to our next group that started in April, which was called the Diamond Dash. And so if you had four active coaches underneath you, by the time those two weeks ended in March, you would be able to move on to our Diamond Dash. And this is where we saw like a huge growth in our team. And I think the best part of it was it really just brought our team together and created like a really awesome team culture that, um, that we loved. And so basically what this group was, was to get in, they had to, they sent me $20. And this way that at the end of the month, whoever held their diamond for six weeks, they would get money from this diamond pot. And so another thing we had was, Again, if you hit diamond in this group, you held it for six weeks, you would be able to come to our, um, our retreat, our diamond retreat that we we're holding at the end of the year. So they knew if they pushed hard enough, they could receive this. And so basically in the group, we had daily check-ins kind of similar to the Emerald Dash. They were going all in with their business for 30 days. We had amazing guest speakers come and talk in our diamond dash anything about leadership or, you know, building your business to diamond, anything that the leaders thought um, would be helpful for a team they talked about. So we had um, a guest speaker every single week. Another thing we had that was really lit in our group was a ring the gong post. And this post basically was anyone to share their wins. So whether it be, hey, I just signed up a discount coach or, hey, I just signed up a coach or, hey, my coach just went Emerald. And that just really created the momentum in the group to be like, kind of created like some type of FOMO. So when people were like, you know, talking about that, I just signed up a discount coach, it really just helped, you know, other people being like, hey, well, I better get on that. Um, they're gonna hit diamond before me kind of thing. So even like people that weren't even in the Diamond Dash group were hitting diamond because it was so contagious from this group. Um, and I believe there was about, 20 people in that group that either reclaimed their diamond, got their diamond for the first time. And we went from a two star, like a two, three star diamond team to a nine star diamond team. Um, my PS coach went from a two star diamond team to a five star diamond team. Um, and it was just like a really amazing group. It was great because we always, we already had the foundation there. Um, and really just our team blew up in that group. And again, it was like four years of consistency and, you know, other people showing up in their business throughout those years. But that group was really where we saw a change in our team. Let me, let me ask you a question. So I want to be clear, the $20 was just a, like a cash pot where you can like buy books or like it was. It was so, so they would money. be. So that, yeah, so whatever they wanted to spend their money on, it was so they would send me $20 to get into the group and I would kind of hold on to it until the end of the month. So anyone in that group that would hold it for six weeks, they would get part of the pot um, and they would just get to take that money. So whatever they wanted to spend it on, they would use that. And then they would also get to go um, to our, dim or our diamond retreat at the end of the year. Okay, so it was just like fun money yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's call them little credits or something. <laughs> credits. Like it was, it was skin in the game. So yeah. um, what I see in everything that you're talking about, Shauna, is game changing. And you kept saying that throughout the whole thing, it was game changing. And for new people who are coming to Beachbody now as a new coach, and they're saying, oh, four years takes so long to build the business. You were consistent from the beginning. You were like the steady Eddie, the the yeah. tor tortoise and the hare, you know, the tortoise is always going to win because you're, you're steady and you saw an explosive growth after going to a new leader conference um, because you focused on the activity. So I, I want to just like bring it home <laughs> so that people understand that you still were consistently doing the work 
Yes. Um, the other thing that I want to ask you about is vision. You kept saying that you had a vision. What vision did you have and how did you know what to envision for yourself as a coach? Yeah. So I remember at the beginning, I just sort of had rank in mind. I wanted to hit diamond or I wanted to hit two star, but I really needed to bring it back on why, because when I hit those ranks, um, I don't just want to sit there and think, okay, I achieved that. But like, why am I pushing so hard to achieve these ranks? Why do I keep showing up? And my vision was really just to have that life of freedom, that financial freedom, freedom of time. And honestly, I wouldn't be able to have that with my job of working in a classroom all day. Um, so I knew that I would have to work hard and I'd have to be consistent. Um, and so that vision for me was just knowing, you know, I was working towards freedom. I was working towards freedom of time. And, you know, eventually down the road, when I have kids, I'll be able to be a stay at home mom and not have to worry about, you know, leaving them and um, not really having a lot of time with them. So that was to me was my vision, not just focusing on the rank, although rank is great and recognition is great. Um, but just knowing like, why did I want that rank? Because when I hit it, I don't want to just chill there again for a few years, like I had done previously. Um, so that was my vision to me. You know, when Darren reads off the names, I always love seeing the coaches who have been around a long time rooting for the people that they helped groom and develop into this business. So it's like, not, sometimes it's not about rank. It's yeah. about the people that you've developed and you brought into the business. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This has been so enlightening for so many people who are new, who may be thinking that introverts aren't successful coaches, <laughs> which is so not true because you are effectively coaching um, like a boss. So thank you for that. In In closing, can you talk about the last four years? What what has it meant to you? What what has become of Shauna Blunt? Yeah, it's hard to pick one thing, but if I were to pick one thing, it would be um, that it's really just helped me have a vision again. Because like I said before, when I finished college, I didn't really have any big plans after that. Like I literally joined Beachbody to get my confidence back. I didn't know it would bring me here. I didn't know that it would literally change my life and allow me to meet like some of my best friends through this through this business opportunity. And so with coaching, it really just helped me have that passion again and know that I get to wake up every single day to a job that I love and knowing I get to work towards a vision and creating a life that I want is like the best. So that's really what's coaching done for me. If I were to pick one thing, um, I could go on forever, but that's mostly what it's done for me. It's perfect. And thank you. Um, it has been a pleasure getting to know you. It is no wonder that you are top 10 in Canada right now. You are crushing it. You have become a, a really strong leader in Canada um, and in the rest of the network. So thank you so much for sharing this morning. You did a great job. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. And you know what? I'm going to take a quote actually from Shauna. I'm doing that now. Once I hear something that I really love from the speaker, I'm taking that quote. I cannot believe how profound this was. Okay. She said, I was showing up for a job I didn't like. So why wouldn't I show up for my coaching business, which I really enjoyed? The reason why I'm saying that, ladies and gentlemen, is because a lot of people come to Beachbody because they want to leave a job that they don't like, a boss that they don't like, the work that they don't like. And then they come to Beachbody and they start coaching and doing something that they love and then not showing up. So it's on you. It's on you. If you don't like the situation that you are in, change it, recalibrate, start over, exit and come back. Uh, come back to what your passion is, what, what, what speaks to you, what fulfills you, but come back all the way. She, her growth exploded this year because she was able to love what she was doing. She had a vision, she had goals. She made the most use of her time. That is it for me today, everybody. I will see you here next week. Bye-bye.